Dente Rigamortis. I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey. The E stands for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. Tonight we have To Hell and Back Again. Wait, no. To Hell and Back. <laughs> I was almost about to insert my my uh, my Hobbit version of that of the story title. It's like To Hell and Back Again. A World of Warcraft story. <laughs> Um, so, To Hell and Back is on Creepasta.wiki. It is a video game creepasta, in fact, a World of Warcraft creep, uh, video game creepasta, and by Pumpkinbot. And, uh, you can go check it out now. We'll wait for pickup. Guys, it's been, like, hours. Are you sure, like, they're gonna come back and pick us up? So, yeah, we'll go into a rundown. Um, uh, the narrator is recounting a strange event that happened while playing World of Warcraft, specifically... The, uh, a quest in the Red Ridge region of the Alliance human territories of the game. Uh, they are the kind of person who likes to egg hunt, uh, like find spots the developer have placed things, like hidden things in and stuff. After starting a new character and getting to the area of Red Ridge, they start a quest line they have very fond memories of. Uh, they play through it, rescuing a squad, which is actually called Bravo Squad, uh, from the orc faction and fighting their way through enemies and to some mini bosses. Uh, on the way through that quest line, they decide to check out a tower on the side that isn't part of the quest uh, to see if there's any kind of like Easter eggs or something that the developers might have tossed in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's nothing special there except that one of the NPCs, Keyshawn, um, that's following the the player, like the one one of the characters that they rescued, and they mm-hmm. get to basically as an escort, uh, says to another NPC, uh, Mesner, uh, the world's gone to hell, and that they've been to hell and back. And this is odd, as they don't usually say that normally, or to, like, another... It's usually to the player when they're, when they're speaking to something, not to another NPC. But they press on. Um, they get to the final boss, which is a dragon... And recall how things are going to go down. Bravo team gets barbecued by the dragon uh, after they render it to a low health. Um, save for Kishan and the player character. The dragon then grabs Kishan and drops him to his death above the nearby lake. Uh, the quest is returned to town and Bravo team are considered heroes by the mayor. Uh, however... That doesn't. Like that's what's supposed to happen. That's what's supposed to happen. That's what they remember. Like they, all right, this is how it's going to go. However, like that whole scenario doesn't actually happen this time around. Uh, the dragon kills the Bravo team except for Kishan and the PC and Mesner. Like uh, Kishan, PC, the PC character, and Me- Kishan, the PC, and Mesner are are still around. Uh, Kishan and the dragon continue fighting with the dragon not dying despite low health. And Kishan being dropped to extremely low health, which is extremely weird because he usually has tons of health and doesn't die like from like during the fight. Uh, Mesner uh, then turns. Oh, yeah, so then Kishan eventually, like when he gets low level or low health, he basically goes into a kneeling uh, uh, action, which uh, cues kind of like a cutscene or the the player character like notes like that's usually when a cutscene's happening. Uh, Mesner then turns to Kishan and ignites and kills him, turning then to the PC and saying the world need, doesn't need more heroes. And the, uh, the dragon grabs the PC, taking them to the lake, which is now a dark void leading to, the, to beneath the world level and drops them through. Um, this effectively crashes the game, and when the player reboots, Mesner is in place of his character on the uh, loading screen, or on the, uh, not the loading screen, the uh, the character select screen. Um, and the game doesn't load back up. It just goes right back to the uh, the character select. And none of his character, like his alt character isn't there, and neither is Mesner. No. When he dies in the void, yeah. it just says on the screen, you have died. Yeah. 
and then it's frozen there, so he all that four is out of the game. Yeah. It takes forever, gets out, loads the game back up, back of the character select screen, Mesner's there, clicks on Mesner, and it brings him directly back to his character screen where it said, you are oh, dead, okay. yeah. you have died, like that same screen. Okay, I, I just, I thought, for some reason I read it, it was a couple of weeks, days ago, a couple of weeks ago, it was a couple of days ago, I um, I thought he had just like tried to reboot and then it just went either went to black or went back to the uh, character screen. No, it went back to w- what was there before. Okay. Um, so then he turns off the game and when he uh, checks his computer... You missed another one. <laughs> Well, okay, it's 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 a it's not supposed to be like a play by play. It's supposed to be a synopsis, so like not everything needs to be mentioned for like the the rundown. Mm-hmm. Um, on the computer, there's a text file called Mesner.txt or .txt uh, stating the horrific war crimes that Keyshawn uh, had committed and accusing the player of their involvement uh, with that, uh, concluding that Keyshawn needs to stay in hell before signing off the message as Mesner. Uh, and that's the end of the story. All right. Anyway, moving on to everyone tolerates the grammar inquisitions. Yeah. My handful of inquisitions are the quest line is pretty good. is a pretty good length and it follows the player having to rescue the former four from imprisonment from the orcs. Then them getting back at the orcs by blowing up their city and generally slaughtering every last one of them in a typical MMO fashion. Um, I think that the them doesn't have to be there. Yeah, it does. Well, then getting back to the... It doesn't... It, because the quest yeah. is about them getting back at... Them being the people you saved, not the player. I suppose. But, like, I don't know. It just... See, like it, it, when, I, when I read it the first time, it was like... It, it read a little weird. But the big problem is the fact that it's one giant sentence. Yep. That is also true, yes. I did rewrite it if you want to hear how I did it. Sure. The quest line is is a pretty good length, period. It follows the player having to rescue the former four from orc imprisonment, comma, and getting back at the orcs by blowing up their city and generally slaughtering blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That works. It also fixed my issue with too many froms. Yeah. Good. So... Rescue the former four from imprisonment from the orcs. And you had the orc imprisonment. So. Yeah. Because I ran into that same issue when I was trying to edit it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so my next one. In the game, I get a message message from Troutman, uh, who works the, uh, for the mayor. Da, 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 da. So just needs a singular message. I don't know why. Well, you got two messages. Well, yeah, why there's two. Me- oh, it was message message. <laughs> the message to the message. <laughs> It's a message about the next message. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Message subshoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one. I remember at the end of this quest well. If memory serve, if memory serves, we're supposed to get the dragon down to low health. Then he burns the group, save for Kishan and the player. So for this one, it was more like this should probably be in past tense, as you are recalling what is supposed to happen, not what happens this time. Like at this point, like he's they're they're recalling what the what the quest is supposed to be, but it's mm-hmm. kind of done in pre- in present tense. So that's just kind of the thing that irked me there. Um, and that's the end of my grammar positions. All right. <clears throat> As I've said before, Messner is the name of one of the NPCs following me, a fire mage, not me. My issue. With this is actual per my actual sure. thoughts as well is well for the actual thoughts it's this is the first time we've established that Messner is following him mm-hmm. because on, before that he's mentioned as being part of the group yeah and the entire group <laughs> is on this mission to raid this orc camp and they're all going together yeah yeah but it's the only the first time we get names to we, we get this the name that he's following him. So it, it's sort of a bit jarring. And also my other issue is that a fire mage and not me are their own sentences in this. And I, I was trying to figure it out. It's like, so um, the yeah. Just yeah. calm with them together? Well. Ellipses them together? 
Yeah, and maybe mention that you're a rogue beforehand. I, I, have, that, I have that in my actual thoughts. <laughs> but why like, does it matter? Even if he is a mage, even if he is a fire mage, that's not him he's talking about. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it it's one of those things where it doesn't really need to be there. You could just said the guy's following me. He is a fire mage. Not saying a fire mage. Yeah. Because, like, at this point, we, we only find out what class he is at the very end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> or what he was throughout the, that entire... Like, I don't even remember what class he was. Rogue. Oh, yeah. okay. And he had to be in, like, level 20 rogue in order to get to Red Rich. Yeah, he said he was level 20. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, I don't know how you didn't um, assume that the entire group of them was going in to do this mission, because it says, like, uh, the last quest, Showdown at Stonewatch, in- involves the group and the player taking down two generals. Yeah, but the thing is, it doesn't... Well, it's the first time it says, this specific NPC is following me. But he's part of the group. Yes. There's five of them. Yes. That's the group that they've been talking about this entire time. <laughs> You're welcome to not... It, it's, okay. but the fact is that it's jarring. Okay. To me, because... <laughs> I'm living in my own world today, apparently. <laughs> uh, beforehand, it says, here's all the people. Yeah. And then it goes on and on. It was like, oh yeah, and this guy's following me, the fire mage. Okay, like, so it seems like, like that should have been, it should have been worded to say, like, like a member, like one of the other, he went to talk to one of the squad mates who was a fire mage, Mesner, kind of. Yeah. Like that. yeah. It, it sounds like I, the whole yeah. mention of Mesner, the fire mage, is following me is unnecessary because all of them are already following them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's parts unnecessary. Yeah. Okay. So that just needs to be refined a little bit, mm-hmm. or clarified a little bit better. Yes. Because well, one of three, of, one <laughs> of the three of us did, did like was like so like terribly confused by. It. Well, basically, I had to go back. Yeah. And it's like, have we mentioned Pesner before? Back and then all the list, yes, all oh, the yeah. list. Oh yeah, but not that he's following until this point. So saying that he's already mentioned that he's following. Yeah. <laughs> it just, yeah, it was not happy. Uh, do, 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 do. An NPC remarks on him being used as a urinal for young orcs. I think a few years of being used to be pissed on would definitely take a toll on anyone's mind. So my issue is the used to be doesn't need to be on there. Because I think a few years of being pissed on yeah. would yeah. <laughs> definitely take a toll on anyone's mind. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> also, I don't know, this is might be a nitpick, but like the an NPC tells him, it's like, could you could you tell us which NPC from the group? Mm-hmm. Or just yeah, they have names exactly. <laughs> As we stated earlier, they have names. So it's clearly <laughs> not Mesner and not not uh, not. Well, Keyshawn's the guy that said that. So, but, so yeah, it, it's either one of the other guys that was mentioned. All right, my next one. Uh, he just stays there at one health, unable to be killed, with Keyshawn still being hit and Mesner just standing there. Uh, I. Added an is. I don't know if that works or not. So Mesner is just standing there. Um, because it's it is, current text. Yeah, right? it is current te- uh, tense. So yeah, even if it's just Mesner stand. Oh, <laughs> and Mesner. <clears throat> yeah, Mesner standing there. Yeah, yeah. Mesner is standing there. Because mm-hmm. yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. An apostrophe s, like at the end of Mesner, wouldn't just be a compounded like Mesner that is? adds possession. That's possession. Possession. That's what I thought. I figured. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people do. Though, although that is a common mis- like uh, issue sometimes with like writing is mm-hmm. make, thinking that is like a compound word, but really it's just possessive version. Mm-hmm. I hate yeah. the English language. We all do. <laughs> all right, and then my last one here is Kishan's normally nigh invincible. He has enough health to be able to take on any of the enemies here without me even attacking, but his health still does go down. So it just still goes down. Yeah. Instead of does go. Yeah. Just kind of because it reads weird. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have a butt story for later. Okay. 
We all look forward to the conjunction junctions. Mm-hmm. So we only got a couple left. Okay. Um, I believe it's the first line. In World of Warcraft, one of the more memorable quest line. What? One of the more memorable quest lines happen in a stone called Red Ridge Mountains. Shouldn't it be happens in a stone in a zone? Yeah. Sorry, I thought. Okay. Did you did you say stone instead of zone? Like the first time. I don't know if my ears are just like deceiving me, but like I swear you said like into the stone called Red Ridge Mountains. I was like, what? I'll redo it just in case. Okay. In World of Warcraft, one of the more memorable quest lines happen in a zone called Red Ridge Mountains. Okay. And what was the the issue you had? Uh, I I feel personally it would be better if one of the quest lines happens in a zone called Red Ridge Mountains. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. It happened. Yeah, happens makes more sense because it's. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, that makes that that reads better. Mm-hmm. That reads more cooter. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and the only other one I have is when they're when the, the weird quote unquote weirdness stuff is happening at the top of the tower. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it's just in regards to the way that it built the scene for me. He said one last thing before snapping back into formation, signifying he's following me again. I've gone to hell and back to Mesner. So because of the order of the words, it made me imagine him going back into formation and then saying it, despite it directly saying that he doesn't, just yeah. because that's the way it's built. It gives you the visualization of him going back and then reminds you that, oh, but before he did that, he said this. So it's almost like you've broken up with like the dialogue first and then have like the, like him the description of him going. You, you rewrote it. Yes, sir. <laughs> He said one last thing. I've gone to hell and back too, Mesner, before snapping back into formation, signifying he's following me again. Yeah. that Because then everything... Y- there's no rewind. You yeah. know? That's one thing that pisses me off the most about uh, certain Gary bosses. Having to rebuild the scene. But that's all I got. Okay. Uh, so I guess on to now. A Conjunction Junction by Mikey. The E stands for evil. <clears throat> I've done this quest before. Many times. But lately, I've been getting interested in little nooks and crannies that nobody ever really bothers to investigate. I have a question. Hang on. Before we do this. I th- isn't it... Didn't we determine that's better when there's no context before it? Because yeah, if you get, well, give a context, I, but then you I'm know exactly what it is. context for the first sentence. Okay. So that it's continuous. Have you been doing that, though? I did it the last couple times. Okay. To have the first sentence that's not a but, and then but, right. but, 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 Okay. You don't want to start the whole thing with a but? Well, I could. I mean, but you, you've done that. I have. <laughs> do, it, do whatever you want. Yeah, Restart. Yeah, do yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I was just Sorry. asking a question. We don't, mean to, we don't mean to take away your thunder. But lately, I've been getting interested in little nooks and crannies that nobody ever really bothers to go investigate. But when Kishan has said this line in the past, he's only ever said my character's name. But that didn't happen this time. But when he used the buff again, its icon was changed to a man cowering in fear. But no, this was a cutscene being played out. But Kishan had to be dealt with, too. Huh. That very streamlined version of the story, <laughs> but it, it kind of works a little bit. Kind of a little bit. Yeah. Like it's it's uh, like it's like it, it basically gives like somebody like hit like fast forward times like five <laughs> on on the rundown. Well, I also have an it story. Ooh. We want to do that now, of course. Right. And now an it story. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Mikey's it. <laughs> It follows the escapades of Messner, Danforth, Krakauer, and Jorgensen, but most importantly, John J. Kishan. It was empty, save for one enemy. I shook it off. It was definitely one of the sadder quests in World of Warcraft. Maybe it was just because I was a different class, but it seemed to take a while to beat the dragon. It said, Commanding shout! Kishan is dying! It picked up again. Okay, 
So, the so it's <laughs> yeah. At the start, it's like it's it's talking about like some like one enemy or something. They like you had to shake the enemy off, and then the dragon at the end is like saying specifically what the commanding shouts called. Yeah. Also, it's like maybe it was because it was because I was uh, a different uh, character, different character type, whatever you said, class. and then a character class, and then I was like. Or maybe it's Maybelline. Wow. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Sillies. <laughs> Alright, so on to our actual thoughts then. Yep. So, I'm going to start with the very beginning, as we usually do. Mm-hmm. Makes, makes sense that way. Anyway, um, please tell me in my talk page, or in this page's talk page, if you know of what of a way to, I could, yeah, if you know of a way I could improve it. This is my first pasta, and I would love for someone to taste test it and tell me if it needs a pinch of salt. Taste testing a creepy pasta. I fucking love that term. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like I know that like, creepy pastas aren't actually supposed to be like culinary and stuff, but I mean, like they every time I tell somebody about a creepy pasta, they get confused yeah. <laughs> because of the whole copy paste slang that is that has evolved from that. It is weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like, would, you, I, would you put a, a pinch of salt on pasta? I mean, that then you just make it salty, like just like, and then this fucking happened. Piece <laughs> of shit. <Yeah. laughs> what would you put a pinch of? I mean, I, I mean, like pasta. salt, salt or spice, like so, like you spice it up, like that's that's mm-hmm. really what it is. Just yeah. like add some extra flavor yeah. and a pinch of parmesan. Exactly. Yeah. Some cheese. Mm-hmm. Yes, make and it like cheesy. <laughs> make, it, make it cheesy, or like add some spice, like flare it up a little bit, mm-hmm. like. And mm-hmm. actually, I have some comments later on for about that how to how to spice it up and make it like go bigger, go home kind of method, uh, methodology, but. Um, yeah, no, I just really love the, the taste test of creepy pasta. <laughs> like, that's an awesome term for this. It is. Oh, I feel like we're doing that every fucking day, <laughs> every fucking episode. <laughs> we test them, we taste test them so you don't have to. <laughs> uh, anyway, so going on to my next one. Blizzard hides a lot of places in the game just for flavor, to look pretty. I've always loved exploring them. Now, though, I'm kind of afraid to go poking my nose in where it doesn't belong. So this is a, this is partially a grammar acquisition. I might change it to um, following an experience I had. However, um, I'm no longer, or I, I'm kind of afraid to go poke my head. Blah, 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 blah. Like just because, like now though, like I don't know, it's a little too bland. Like I might but spice it up a little bit. It, it makes it more. It, it kind of. <sighs> Like, you know when in sentences you put, like, the creepy thing at the end or the weird thing at the yeah. end to, uh, like, to not not justify it, to to make it stand out? Yeah. That's what they're doing here, saying, like, normally this is what happens, but because, but, like, because of what's about to happen, I don't do this anymore. Yeah, and I, I'm fine with, like, the rest of that sentence. It was just the, the now, though, like, I feel it could have been, like, flourished a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, my issue with that... Is the last sentence there where I'm kind of afraid of poking my nose in where it doesn't belong? And it's like, well, there's they, no spot where you it, it doesn't belong when you're unless, playing the game unless you're going into the code. That's what I was thinking. Like, unless it's the code, or like you find a glitch that lets you go outside the box and you find a bunch of like stuff that's been like just like left on the cutting room floor kind of thing, mm-hmm. like with Skyrim secrets to mention that that yeah. story <laughs> again. Um, but yeah, also, yeah, I, I feel like the ending there should, like, maybe just, like, just poke my nose in, maybe not where it doesn't belong, but, like, where where they hid things or something like that. Or, like, I don't know, just some, slightly, just slightly modify that sentence so that it doesn't, like, doesn't belong, because, like, you're, you're yeah. supposed to go to these places. Yeah. Like, even if yeah. They're, they're Easter eggs, like, that's, like, that's the reason they put them in there. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, um, like, essentially trying to say that in the future I'm just going to follow... This point A to point B. I'm not going to do side. I, like I'm not going to get, get sidetracked detours. anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm not. I'm done hunting. Like this creeped me out too much to like want to do any more Easter egg hunting. Mm-hmm. Uh, on that note, uh, the angle of getting creeped out by something in a game um, that shouldn't be there or is like kind of contrasting to its genre, like making it something spooky, like a spooky Easter egg in say World of Warcraft or GTA V. You know, shouldn't be there, but when you find it, it's like, ooh, that's fucking creepy. Oh, that, that, why is that there? That is totally fucking my jam. Like, that, like, that, I love the premise of this story in terms of, like, discovery, like, being an Easter egg hunter and finding something too spooky. 
mm-hmm. by me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I I I will always because uh, I always go looking for the weird and creepy Easter eggs like that a developer has hidden in their not horror game. I'm looking at you, Red Dead Redemption Two, with your creepy shack in the middle of a, in, in a place that I've been like riding past like for like the entire game. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, so I was totally down with that premise of this game, of the story. Um, unfortunately, the story does need some work out to that, though. <laughs> uh, moving on. Anyway, I just made a new character and decided to do this quest line again. Okay, this this might be a nitpick, but you have to reach level 15 to 20 to even like, start a quest in the Red Ridge uh, Mountains. Would you rather him, for, for like, uh, tell his entire tale of I, leveling up to level 20? Like, granted, that's not a lot for, like, a game that has a level cap, I think, currently, of, like, 110 or something or more. But, and I'm not asking for a lot. I'm just asking for a few words noting reaching the appropriate level to get there, like, to get to the like, that spot. I'm just asking for a little bit more in- details at the beginning like just a few words. So, so like, just like I made a new character, level and up. by the time I got to this quest, exactly. You know, yeah. Like I'm, d- I'm not asking for like an in-depth like let's or uh, like walkthrough of your mm. character getting there. I'm just asking for like a few words to clarify like what level you have to be because like again like you also have to kind of approach these, especially when you're doing video game pre pasta You have to um, approach it as like not everybody who's reading this knows what you're talking about. Like, I played World of Warcraft for about 10 years mm-hmm. um, before, like, finally stopping because my computer couldn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I barely ever touched Red Ridge Zone. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually had to go onto w- the WoW Wiki and, like, look up Red Ridge and, like, kind of get myself familiarized while I was reading, or after I read the story, just to make sure I was, like, like just know some things about it. Um, but, yeah, like, he, like take a little bit of time to like kind of help your your reader like get like familiarized with the the environment that they're going into especially when you're doing a game that exists that not everybody has played mm-hmm. that's all i'm saying treat it like it's your own like kind of like it's your own world that you built yeah mm-hmm. kind of thing and the next thing i have is Kishan was always the one being attacked since the enemies were elites and would quickly decimate me i know no, that elite is a level status in, of difficulty in World of Warcraft, but it would be weird to see Sengeli from Halo in World of Warcraft. <laughs> Sengeli being the elites, I, I the know, term I, elites. I, I'm aware. I'm yeah, I know. I, I know. <laughs> Does it say uh, elite or elites? It says elites because like there's, there, mul- cause cause there's multiple, multiple elites. Elite yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it's just like I, I know that that's a that's a difficulty uh, rating in the game, mm-hmm. but. The way it said made me think of work, work, work. Yes, they're all <laughs> it's a crossover. Exactly, and, and again, that would be weird if there's something elite models from like Halo One or Halo Two or whatever in World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Also, best cr- crossover ever. I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe not best, but like that'd be a really cool, a weird crossover. <laughs> be a cool crossover. <laughs> Very strange. Yes. Uh, next one. They were just the same enemies that they there were outside. No rare ones, nothing. I got to the top, inside a large room. It was empty, save for one enemy. I stepped up the to the back of the room, up a small step. Kishan spoke up through a speech bubble. The world's gone to hell, Mesner. So, for this, like, the reason I bring this one up is... Is this supposed to be the triggering factor for the strange events? Like, yeah. it feels like it should be, since it's stated like a few times in the story that uh, the player is an Easter egg hunter, and so stumbling upon a secret in the game where it changes the outcome of the quest makes more makes for a more coherent narrative. As it is, though, there really isn't a trigger of the for the change. The NPC just simply says the thing randomly or seemingly randomly at this point. Mm-hmm. And what of the enemy at the top of the tower, like that single enemy? like Because it, he's glossed over, I'm assuming it's just another I know, mob I that feel, just gets killed. And I understand that. I just feel like maybe it should have been... Yeah, there's a missed opportunity here, for sure, to like make this weird... out Make, make the, the, the that enemy something weird out of place 
And then when they attack it or they kill it, that's when Mesner... Make it um, fucking Mesner? Yeah, maybe, like yeah, maybe a second, a second Mesner. Mesner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, like, give their, give a more, like, obvious connection between, like, you going into, like, breaking off from the main quest to this tower and it changing the outcome of the quest line. Like, mm-hmm. make it, like, seem more like an Easter because otherwise it just seems like a red herring. Like, the whole, like, the East, like, there was no real, it really wasn't, like, a point to going in that tower outside of, like, I mean, there was, obviously, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't really established properly. Well, or, like, my so, problem is, it doesn't, at least I'll double check, but it doesn't say that the characters broke formation, just that they returned formation after. Yeah. So yeah. it sounds like a couple of them walked somewhere and had this conversation and then re- resumed the uh, the formation. Yeah. But that wasn't really said. So if exactly. that happened, if you're walking around with them normally wa- following you, you get to the top floor, you kill the last enemy, and then they walk to like the window and have a conversation and come back. Exactly. And that's a scripted yeah. event, and it would signify... That there is some kind of trigger yeah. here for yeah. doing this. Like, yeah. yeah. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, make it a little bit more obvious, like, that this is a trigger, and or, like, again, otherwise it's kind of a missed opportunity of, like, yeah. why this was here. Mm. Yeah. And, I mean, Kishin is just talking to himself. I have the his quote for the next paragraph as well. It was, The world's gone to hell, Messner. The world's gone to hell. And back. I've seen hell, you know. I've gone to hell and back to Mesner. Like they're having an exchange. Yeah, yeah, but he, Mesner's not saying anything. Well, yeah, he's just staying. <laughs> st- he's, he's staying stoic and like secretive. Uh, no, I, I assumed that Mesner said something when he said, "I've been to hell and back to Kishan." Right? <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't say. No, he doesn't say uh, to Kishan. That's to Mesner. Like that. No, is... it says it twice. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, he sn- said one last thing before snapping it back into formation. I've gone to hell. And back to Mesner. And then, before that... It's, the world's gone to hell, Mesner. And Kishin spoke up again. The world's gone to hell and back. I've seen hell, you know. So there's no... There's, Mesner doesn't talk at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I thought... It's just having a one-sided conversation. Yeah. Yes. But not. But, but usually he would, he would talk to the player, not a random... Character. For some reason, I thought the second one was a different name that was said. Yeah. Probably because I don't know the characters, so I mixed them yeah. up. And honestly, like again, like I, I kind of wish I'd gone back to Red Ridge. I wish I'd gone to Red Ridge because, like this, like, but yeah, I, I wasn't really much. I was when I played when I played World of Warcraft. I played either Horde or when I played the Alliance. I definitely didn't play a human. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So we well, can go anywhere. As you I mean. can, but I mean, like that. I like. I just never really hung out in like. I think that the most. I, I never thought Red Ridge was like anything really spectacular. I went to the creepy stuff, obviously. So I went. Well, to there's the, clearly creepy stuff uh, in Red Ridge. Now I know. So like, I wish I could, <laughs> yeah. like wish I could pick up the game again. But mm-hmm. uh, no, I went to Deskwood or like uh, or like Westfall. Like I didn't go to the other side of the forest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, uh, where are we? All right, so here we go. So my next thing is uh, this quote. Uh, After staring at my monitor, wondering what the hell just happened, I reluctantly opened World of Warcraft back up. Logging back in like normal, I place, or in place of my level 20 rogue, it said Mesner, level, question mark, question mark, human mage, complete with with his picture replacing that of my characters. Some of the character information would have been nice at the beginning of the story rather than at the end. Yep. Um, that's all I'm saying. Character information that's in him. The uh, like the rogue and some of that. Like just like just so you have a visual. Yeah, the entire, yeah, time. The entire time I was like, what, what class are you playing? Like, what what yeah. class is this new player like character? Like, because I, I was thinking honestly, like probably a warrior, just like a default. Mm-hmm. But. You're bashing all the warriors out there. No, I'm just they're saying all, like, that's... they're all basic bitches. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I made a warrior back in the day. Fuck you! Wow, <laughs> so much hostility today. Jeez. Yeah, right. I don't know why. <laughs> um, you need you need Snickers. I do. <laughs> uh, especially given that there's. Yeah, like so, like, you're yeah, like again, just like that. You're playing an established video game with a wide range of character choices. So like. Maybe establish like what your character class is, just so you have so the people have a visual, visual, a visual, visual, a visual at mm-hmm. the beginning of the story. Because for all we know, he could be a night elf, even exactly. they just fast travel down. Or a dwarf, or, or a gnome, anything, or yeah. paladin. Draenei, paladin. Yeah, you, you could be paladin's a, not a race, but nice try. 
<laughs> well, but it's the human quest. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, oh, well, it's Red Ridge. Actually, at level twenty, you can like come down as any. Basically, after level ten, you can basically do all. Actually, you can probably do all the all the alliance quests except for like the first couple. Yeah, you can just um, like essentially fly to other starting zones, exactly, right? Yeah, if you have the muns, and he clearly has muns because he has multiple characters. Yeah, and you can mail your your all yeah. this, uh, pat, like stuff. Mm-hmm. So. You just run at a level of, like, one character. I've done that. Stormwind to the that. mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> I think at one point I was, like, I was a night elf or some shit, and, like, everyone else I played with was human. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll run to Stormwind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so, yeah, that's that part done. And then uh, we get to the text message file. Or the text file. Mm-hmm. A text file appeared on my desktop titled mesner.txt. The top line just read, you have died. I scrolled down a hundred lines or so, and it picked up again. So I like this in sort of a mild cyber horror way. I've actually seen this in, a, in games that have been popping up lately in like the indie scene, um, mostly horror ones, that start off, like you start the game, and you play through it, and then if you get killed or caught by a monster, the game crashes, and it generates a text file or an image file on your computer like or in mm-hmm. the folder where the game is supposed to be so suddenly there's a bunch of new file or fo- uh, files in the in that folder that uh, either pop up hidden or something like that mm-hmm. um and it's usually just like a text file of like you sh- like you're you're now cursed or something like that or like something like or like an image file that pops up of like the monster's like big scary face like kind of a jump scary kind of thing and so like it it adds it enhances the immersion level of the, the creepiness of those kind of games. And I feel like this story tried to do that. However, that's more than it's, it, that's more of a one-time experience thing that is hard to fully replicate in a written story form, uh, unless you up the ante a bit. Um, mm-hmm. And this is the part we have, we, we, we've mentioned this before, specifically Mikey um, with dream sequences Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's kind of the same thing with the video game creepypastas have a tendency to have a lower horror threshold for some readers because the threat level is also fairly low for the player protagonist. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, in that moment, if you were playing that game and something bizarre happened, it'd be fairly unsettling. But unless you pull off a really good philosophical horror and like immersion level, like with your descriptors and like atmosphere building in the story, which I feel this one could have could do given given its direction. It just needs a little bit more work at it. Where it's more the player is left shaken by the statement or conceptual terror dropped on them. A revelation, perhaps. So good a revelation. <laughs> um, it needs more punch to get through there or get there. Though. Like it needs a lot more like work in the in the writing to get to that level of like where the story actually leaves the person shaken. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the problem with WoW, yeah, in regards to doing something creepy in it, is how disconnected the player is from what's happening in the game. Because most horror games are first person or third person, because your camera's right there, yeah. close to the action. But in WoW, you're you're, you're can, playing way the zoomed yeah. out, you know. Yeah. yeah. Now, mind you, I've had some uh, points in games like WoW, like Secret World Legends, where they try to up the ante with the horror. Uh, or where they where they try to pull off horror stuff, and it does work sometimes. Like uh, even when you're like kind of pulled out a little bit, but like it depends. It also depends on like how you how your preference of playing because you can like be right behind your character's shoulder, yeah, or you can pull up and so. But also um, in Sea World Legends, they like actively try to show you stuff that's horrible, horrible as in it's horror, yeah, and creepy and like tentacles and weird stuff like that. Where yeah. all the things that happen in this, there's stuff you would normally see, well, like a dragon. Fire, yeah, you know, or like, or but like, and even like when you when the the, the empty, basically the hole in land in the world, yeah, uh, and they drop them down, like that's something weird. But like, it needs to be described a little yes, bit more. It, it needs to be like you need to up the ante on the technique, like on the scare technique, because again, like Secret World Legends, they don't just do like it's not just tentacles and stuff like that, but it's there's like effects that affect the screen or like uh, like weird, creepy like flashes that happen that like of jump scary things. Um, it's it's one of the reasons why it's like visceral horror is much more it's much easier to write um, for like spooks and unsettlingness than philosophical horror. Like this story is kind of like I feel like this one was kind of going with um, that Mesner um, 
was basically guilt tripping uh, the player into yeah, like basically like you like you you're such a violent person like and you're like basically just like you're you were an accomplice to war crimes in this game kind of thing uh, in this world that is a game to you but in to, to me it's real life kind of thing like so I liked that kind of like play on that kind of feel if that's the philosophical horror of this is like you're playing a game that is war but because you're it's a game like now mo you're you're just a murder hobo like you're just like following along and like enjoying it but like to those characters they that's real like that this is actually like horrific horrific war and stuff like that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so but the story it's a little it's a little big for the story's britches kind of yeah like in terms of that like it needs a little it needs a lot more work to like get to like be um to actually like grab like grind home the 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 fear and the creepiness of that revelation mm-hmm. also nothing happens where the player himself does anything to directly screw over Mesner. exactly like, so they it's can't, not yeah. it's not like in the in the game normally you have a choice or it like it it's not actually a choice but the way it's laid out you have to go for Kishan and he has to die but it's just like dragon fire kills all of them and it's nothing you could have done about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's weird that he's trying to guilt trip you into something you had no choice over. Yeah, but I mean, it's, yeah, no, I, mean, I think it's like just the, the quest line over, and like then you find out afterward that uh, Keyshawn was actually like a war criminal. Like, he killed people as well as orcs. Um, and was, people too. I know what you mean. Yeah, no, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and, <laughs> and again, like even like what Mesner says, like if if we just killed the orc leaders, the, the rest of the orcs would have ran away. And like they're not great people either, but like they're still people, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And like Keyshawn deserves to stay in hell, kind of thing, like that. I feel like the story again, like, but he's also an accomplice to all this happening too. No, I, know, I, know, I know, I know, helping. I know. <laughs> that's weird. I mean, that's that's kind of the paradox of villains. Like, yeah. They they don't see themselves as the villain either. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But. Regardless, yeah, like I feel like the story needs a lot more work with in regards to like, the writing if you're going to pull off that kind of uh, philosophical horror. Um, but that's enough of my theory essay on horror. Uh, I think there could be uh, more done after the game crashes, just to kind of help up the ante on the story. So, like maybe the player, the player's computer. Uh, gets in. Actually, do you guys want me to? Do we want to put this into kind of like a brainstorming thing, like after we do all our actual thoughts, or should I just go continue with my actual thoughts here? Because the last bit of my actual thoughts is really just kind of like brainstorming how to up the ante and how to make the story a little bit better, like by the end, like how to make it scarier or how to make it a more interesting story. I mean, that's part of notes, I guess. Yeah, Let's I just wanted like final thoughts. Yeah, and then you guys just want to like. To be honest, I have no notes. I only have final thoughts. Okay. Um. Mikey, do you? I have some actual thoughts, but well, do you want me to continue with this? Like, because I have a few blurbs about like some suggestions for like making it like upping the ante and making it creepy. Yeah, you can just do it. Just okay. Do it. okay. So I think it, there could be more done to uh, after the game crashes. Like maybe the player's computer gets infected with a virus planted in the code of the game. Um, clever bot starts talk, talking. Exactly. About. Yeah. Or someone hacked uh, a patch to plant this in the game. Like, it's not even Blizz uh, that we need to demonize here. It's just, like, somebody uh, on the outside, like, like somehow got away, got like hacked into the game or something like that when, uh, during a patch. Um, just for, like, a little bit more mundane, creepy, weird thing. How would you prove that? I, I don't know. But I'm just I'm just giving suggestions. Like, you, there'd be, like, ex- you could explore that idea. Um, I just don't know how you would... Just have a narrator it. telling... About this player that's playing the game, and then the narrator knows all, so the narrator or, can just say. Or perhaps the guy, like after, like to expand the story a little bit, like they went and like start asking, "Hey, other people experience this?" And then it turned out that yeah, like there was some kind of like weird thing in the code or something. But, like some other people found out about it too, so like, mm. that's where you get how you get the the players like knowledge to the player or to the protagonist. Um. Could be that the player's information has been compromised in some way, and they're now being stalked in real life by some ex- extreme anti-war obsessed hacker <laughs> who's a little unhinged and just going after people who trigger that their modification in the game. Um, could be a ghost in the machine, something supernatural that has latched onto the game and haunting that tower in Red Ridge. Um, Going even further range, World of Warcraft has been growing and developing um, via patches and such for well over 10 years. Maybe something has evolved in the programming. Um, so that it's like some there's some actual AI kind of afoot 
in the t- in the in the uh, in the game itself. That's not too happy with all these players coming into their world and killing, like slaughtering them. <laughs> um, and these are just some suggestion prompts um, to help, like, develop the story into something other than just a simple weird occurrence in a video game. Because that's really what the story is. It's just this is a weird thing. Um, kind of left me a little sh- a little creeped out. And this is my story, but I feel like you could, because you're, because this is a creepy pasta, you can make this a lot more exciting. Other than it is, but that's the that's my suggestions and actual thoughts. Mikey. All right, so the actual thoughts I've left here are, but lately I've been getting interested in little nooks and crannies that nobody ever really bothers to go investigate. So. Thinking about it and how small the area is, a lot of people would have gone to that other tower. Yeah, that's true. So it had to have been something recent that was modified or something like that. Because people, yeah. especially because it's littered with enemies, so people would do it specifically just for XP, even. Yeah, and I mean Red Ridge is very small. Actually, a lot of, like World of Warcraft zones are considerably like they're not like Skyrim's. Like, mm-hmm. They're not like small. They're not like. Um, they're they're fairly simplified, cartoonish like yeah. versions of um, what should be like a lo- a vast region. Yeah, like the yeah. desert mm-hmm. borders onto like a polar region, and you can see the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or like a forest kind of suddenly just borders into like like there's nice green forest, and then there's a river, and suddenly it's just gray and like monochrome, like <laughs> darkness and duskwood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole. Like, oh yeah, I decided to search that entire area. It's like, well, a lot of people would have searched that entire area before you. Yeah. Um, like, so. Just, again. Yeah, so, but he's not saying that this. he's the first to encounter this. Is yeah. He? He, well, well, no. And, but he's yeah. looking for something creepy and different. But if this actually did trigger something, you'd think there would be forms or something. And you know what? That's actually, like, this story, this could be, like, like this story could be the first part of, like, and then, like, have, like, an extra, like, an expansion on it, where he goes and, at, like, looks around and finds out that there's a, a community that's been, like, talking about Called this. the Princess Society. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> legit, like, or the, like, yeah, the Mesner Society. <laughs> and then you find out that Mesner's never, or, like, if he had, like, added a character in the Bravo Squad that what that wasn't actually in the list... Like, there was another character that he wasn't familiar with that was with the party. Like, basically, you make your own little sprite character. Um, but it's been uh, you find out that's the addition. Like, that's the trigger kind of thing. So, like, at a certain point in this quest, regardless if you went to the tower or not, like, this character triggers a conversation with, with Kishan. And then that's... And then, yes, yeah, so like, and then you find out that, like, later after the story that, like, all the other characters are canon except for this one. And for some reason... He's not in the game afterward, like, but he pops up here and there, and like through other, and maybe there's other quests in other regions that uh, he pops up in. I hate to say it, but everything you said has been done in the princess. princess. I know, I know, but I mean, so, like, you know what? You know what? If it, it, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like that, those are you can still uh, you can copy and paste those ideas and make your and, and add them to something else or make them something different. Like princess is kind of more varied, whereas this one would be more like World of Warcraft focused. And I mean, like, like. Everything's been recycled. Like ideas can be recycled. Ideas can be revert as long as you make them your own, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. All right. So the the next actual thought I hear, have here is from the letter. <laughs> uh, did you ever think about what you were doing, or were you only in it for the gold? Consequences be damned. I looked up the quest rewards for the quest that's mentioned at yeah. the beginning. Zero copper. You don't even get gold for that quest. <laughs> Do you get experience at least? Yeah. But, but he says, are yeah. you only in it for the gold? Yeah. I mean, well, you get nothing. You don't even get copper. You that's get weird. nothing. You lose, sir. Good day, sir. That is weird. Yeah. Alright. That could be easily changed for where you're only in it for the glory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're getting XP and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh... So do you seriously not get anything out of that? 
You just it sounds did. like it's an entire quest line, and at the end it's just, you did it. Well, yeah. there's multiple quests. Yeah, but this is the last one, it's so it should have the biggest rewards. It's an experience, probably more just it's, experience. What? Yeah, it's basically for that, uh, to get experience with that faction or whatever. Oh, so it's a rep, it's a rep quest. Because okay. that's the thing in World of Warcraft, is you can get rep quests with, like, furbolgs and other, like, races and stuff like that, like, sub-races and stuff like that, and then this one is for a faction within the, the Alliance. Hmm. Okay. And then, uh, the only explanation that, that I could come up with that made sense is that uh, Nair has a multiple personality disorder. Ooh, that's, that's, Why? Cool. that's an interesting idea. And Mesner is his character from his other personality. And his other personality has basically made changes to the game and whatnot. And then there's Cause a bit of bleed effect. Yeah. Like like he's seeing in game that it's saying Mesner, which is the other character, but it's just his mind putting it there. So like during the fight and stuff like that, it all goes according to plan, but because he's been like triggered by the by the mes- by the from that from like the Mesner thing, he's seeing it differently. Yeah, that, that's interesting. The problem is, you, so how- this character is at the end of the quest. He's just standing there. Meanwhile, in his mind's like, no, my character died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or just, to avoid. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I just like that's actually really. Yeah, I, I kind of like the problem. The problem I see with that is, how would you write in like the revelation? Like, how would you reveal that? You reveal it in the text file. And say, what are you doing with your life? Why are you wasting your time playing World of Warcraft? <laughs> wow. Yeah, why are you like, <laughs> you could be doing so much more. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And it's actually just like, um, from, from your other, from your other personality. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, like you, that's when you find out that the character is actually, yeah. the player is actually suffering from schizophrenia yeah. or like multiple personality yeah. disorder. And that explains how the game got deleted at the end too. Yeah. Because the al- just, ultimate personality deleted it on him. Yeah. Actually, I actually, okay. To cite another video game, I actually been doing, I've been playing, um, uh, Fallout New Vegas, uh, one of the, the first DLC, uh, Dead Money. So, spoilers for New Vegas. And uh, there's actually a super mutant in it who you don't realize is... like So you, you, you see the super mutant in a cage, like in a prison. And he's like cowering. He's like, no, dog wanna... Uh, dog wanna... Uh, dog will be good. Dog will be good. And then you like uh, try to find the key and you have to go down to a basement. And in the basement you find a bunch of recordings. Or you get a bunch of recordings from like a very intellectual like, sounding guy. And it's like... Yes, well, if you've been here, like, I assure you, if you uh, have gotten this far, you can have the key and unlock dog. Um, and then you, you get, you open it up and so it's like, just before you go, play this before dog, um, before you open the cage. And then you, you open it up and it's a command word or something like that. And you go up back up to, um, to dog, the super mutant, and play the audio saying like, um, be good dog. And then it's by that, it's that same voice. And then suddenly the dog, the super mutant changes like his posture and all that, and even his voice to the that of the voice that you heard on the recording. It turned out he was a second personality that yeah. that named God. <laughs> that uh, that uh, that was uh, that like is a lot more intellectual and a lot more intelligent uh, of a super mutant than dog was, than his this bestial savage monster version. So yeah, it's basically like. Um, the message, like again, like mm-hmm. the second personality left messages for the for the other personality. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cute. Yeah, and so like that, yeah, exactly. Like that, use that kind of technique, and for this story, like like there were messages left by. Maybe he got he went back to the mailbox and found like messages left in game by him or by this Mesner character. Mm-hmm. Um, but or like again, yeah, like have the text message like that text uh, file be by the second personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, just to give myself some context, I looked up gameplay of the mission that's mm-hmm. mentioned. And, How accurate was it? <laughs> um, fairly, although I was expecting the the battle with the dragon to be more epic. I mean. But, yeah, yeah it, I was underwhelmed by that. But then that's mainly because I was 
in my mind, I guess, comparing it to Neverwinter, yeah, where Neverwinter is. has a lot of yeah. dragon battles. Well, here's the, here's the <laughs> thing about like, I mean, it, again, it's kind of the out of context, or like, even like slightly out of context, and like lack of nostalgia. Like, yeah, he's like the the writer is flourishing this in a nostalgia, yeah. through a, through rosy glasses. Yeah, um, and like again, like like to, again to spice up the story a little bit, and but it's the same thing. But yeah, exactly. Like if you were writing something from Neverwinter, it might be a little bit more, even more flourished than what it is. Yeah. So the, my my comment there is that uh, my theater of the mind while reading this was better than the actual game, <laughs> which is good. Well, it always will be, <laughs> but. Yeah. No, but in the actual yeah. game, it makes me go, "How the heck did you make a story out of this?" <laughs> like, you know, I, you it, it, I know yeah. it's point for point, pretty much. But <laughs> do you are you familiar with like the role playing communities that pop out of uh, World of Warcraft? No, they're basically fan fiction writers, uh, like levels of like storytellers within World of Warcraft. Like they write like long form like role playing segments mm. of their characters playing out something in the game. Yeah, there's entire servers that yeah. are RP servers. Exactly, yeah. And like my one of my buddies uh, from college, I was one of was one of those guys and like I looked at some of his logs, like some of his logs were like massive paragraphs after paragraphs of like details. And like they played out in game, but like obviously in game there's limitations. So like with the written word there's no limitations. Mm-hmm. So I actually like that. I like I'm 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 glad that you got kind of an enjoy you got a a better feel for the game. Through the writing, through this fan fiction writing, essentially. <laughs> yeah. But but my issue for the game, if I was to ever play it, I'd be disappointed because the dragon just seemed generic, like yeah. all the other enemies. Yeah. So. It's well, a really old game. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. A, yeah, that, that's you you click on the it's... enemy, you go up, you tank and spank, and you're done. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> how it is. And yeah. I mean, like, that's also the, uh, the, uh, a moment of perception, like... Um, like for again, like I have very fond memories of World of Warcraft because I played it for like ten years. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure, like now, if I went back to it, it'd be like, yeah, this is compared to like other games and stuff I played, uh, like like Skyrim or whatever. This is like tame. But it's all about like like when like the nostalgia factor, like yeah. the yeah. the immersion level, the immersion factor, the 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 time you put into the game, and like why like why these stories and why these this game is important to you, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So like, but and if yeah, if you just to start now, it's like the Game Grumps thing where like they tried to uh, where Ross tried to get the guys into World of Warcraft. Oh, Guild Grumps. Yeah, Guild Grumps, <laughs> and it just like it it didn't pan out at, at all because like because well, Ross is a terrible human being. Well, no, no, <laughs> Ross, Ross did it wrong. Like he 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 was showing them like kind of the boring stuff. Like he yeah. thought that he to him the quest lines and stuff that are are what's fun and exciting. But really, uh, when when then Holly showed them like like wh- another aspect of World of Warcraft, which just like basically bullshit yourself like and just have fun mm-hmm. with like different things and stuff of like that in the game, that's when thing they actually got enjoyment out of it. Yeah, but, uh, like, as new players. So like it just depends on like your level of entry, I think, mm-hmm. into the game. But yeah, yeah. So that covers my thoughts on this. I only have final notes. Okay. Even though my final notes are kind of exactly what you guys have been talking about, but I'll talk about it later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, so final thoughts. Uh, I think as it is, this is an interesting take uh, on something weird happening in, to a player in World of Warcraft. However, um, like having having the player accused, oh, I guess I'm basically going off of what I was I had said earlier in my actual thought. Having having the player accused and called out about their violent actions and roles in a game world by some strange programming or force in that game world. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, though. It's rather tame and bland on the creepy side of things. Like again, I like the idea, the the con- the, the initial concept. The execution's a little tame for a creepy pasta. I feel if you want to like up, you, you really do need to up the ante um, yeah. to make this better than than like average or like better than yeah. like meh. Because like cool concept, just not great on execution. Yeah. But that's my final thoughts. Um, I don't. I guess I need to recommend recommendation. It. Um, I think as it is, I wouldn't recommend it to most people. I would maybe recommend it to World of Warcraft players just to like maybe give the you know honestly a recommendation to like help this person like improve on their story. Like, how do you think this could be improved? Um, but as it is, I don't think I can recommend it fully. So, yeah. and myself, I'm not recommending it. Um, I like the idea of the multiple personality because that, yeah, that's that a good idea. 
explains, like, the alternate personality is a coder, which would explain why it had Mesner, question mark, question mark for level, because he changed that in the file somewhere. See, I was even thinking that. I was just or thinking it's in their head. Yeah, it's yeah. entirely... Yeah. For all we know, he could have another character that's M3 and then ER is his name. Yeah. And just because of his, his mind stuff going on, it's making him look like the character model of Mesner and, like putting in the question marks in the level in his head. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, I, I think that would work, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's that extra, like, thing that I think this story needs would be something to... A psychological, just... like... Yeah, it, this this definitely, like, philosophical horror aside, I think that's actually really what it should be, is a psychological horror. Because, mm-hmm. again, like, nothing's really happening to the player... Mm-hmm. But we're playing basically with the reader's perception because they all they have is basically this window into the character's mind. Mm-hmm. So like that's all they're given, and then suddenly at the end we reveal that it's actually this character, this person is suffering from multiple personalities and trying to communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's the that's the that's the creepy punch. Mm-hmm. Once again, Mikey, you come up with a really good way to make the story creeper, <laughs> creepier. Mm-hmm. And it offsets your the times you've made the stories worse for me <laughs> because you've explained every, all the creepiness away. <laughs> yeah, you gotta start going back to that. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Never. Yeah, you do. I'm fine with creepy Mikey. <laughs> I mean, you've been explaining the creepiness away yourself, Colt. That's why I'm saying, like, oh, it could just be done by a hacker. Well, no, no, no. That, that's not making it creepier. That's me explaining, like, giving... Uh, some I know it's not making it creepier. It's explaining away the creepiness. No, but I mean, like, Mikey's... Thing is, like he either he either makes the story not scary or he mm. makes it scarier. Oh, I know. <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. I know. Mm. Okay. Mm. So final thoughts. <laughs> oh me. Yeah. So we're waiting now. Clip. And for my phone to respond. <laughs> <laughs> so by the end of the story, I didn't have any notes put down. I just kind of read it and like, okay. Mainly due to how okay the story is and. I, I mean that as much as a negative as a positive. Yeah. Because as it is, it checks all the boxes of traditional creepypasta video games. It's a game. Yeah. It stays in the game. And it's either something possible in the game or not something possible in the game. And there's no repercussions to the person that's happening. Absolutely. All those are checkmarked. Yeah. Uh, so, like for example, I went back and compared it to the Warframe creepypasta that we re- reviewed back in 2016. Episode 109, if anyone's curious. In the Warframe story, there's an in-game event that's normal, the stalker attacking the player. In the WoW story, there's an in-game event that's normal, the quest that they're on. In the Warframe story, there's something different going on, but it's possible to do in the game. The number of enemies on the map was only showing one, and all of them were gone. In the WoW story, it's the same. The NPCs are talking in text bubbles at a specific location that you don't normally go to, but... NPCs talk in text bubbles at when you go to specific locations, so it's yeah. something that can be done in the game. In the Warframe one, the stalker kills the player, and it's over. In the WoW one, the dragon kills the player, erases the character's, the actual player's character, and then it's over. Like, they both hit all the same checkpoints along the way. Yeah. And it kind of goes into Ben Drown territory as well. So, if... I, I'm if, pretty sure Ben Drown invented that like trope. And I think a lot of those indie video games I mentioned earlier mm-hmm. probably drew inspiration from uh, ooh, Kyle Elliott, uh favorited the um, our last episode. There. Sorry, we're on recording. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, like it, like I, like all those indie games I had mentioned, or I, the indie games I had mentioned, where like mm-hmm. uh, the game crashes after you get caught by the monster, or, like something like something happens in the game, and then yeah. the game closes. And there's suddenly a text file and stuff like that. That, mm-hmm. I believe, is actually kind of from Ben Round. Like, cause yeah. Ben Round was one of the first video game creep busts, and a lot of people have pulled from that. What I'm saying is. I feel like Sonic EXE did that too. I don't remember. Which came after Ben Round. Oh, I know. So, I'm like, just saying. Yeah, a lot. Again, like, yeah, it's a And, like, again, like, even the princess to a degree too. So, but I think the princess did bend the Ben Round, but that's up to debate. Yeah. Um, sorry, continue. Long story short, they all hit the same checkpoints. Yeah. And, um,. Even the character change to Mesner in the story, it's very akin to the Ben Drown file name change. Yeah. So it's a competent story, but there's others that follow the exact same path. Mm-hmm. So the best I can give is a partial recommendation. Mainly because this, if this is your first story, you did better than most creepypasta authors out and, there. And that's one of the reasons, like, honestly, I was the same way. Like, initially, I read the story. I was like, all right, that was 
it was a video game creep pasta, and I was like, wait, player, the guy actually wants yes some some like feedback. All right, I'm going to go back and like try and find some things that I think would be improve would improve upon it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that's honestly why I had as many notes as I did it was because I was forcing myself to actually mm-hmm. give my opinion on the story, which Cause weird. Yeah. Because, yeah, as it is, it's a very baseline video game creepypasta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I would recommend it to someone who plays WoW and wants to read a, cre- a creepypasta because it's not bad. It just doesn't... It, it stays in the safety bubble. Yes. It doesn't try anything It's new. a very mild horror. Yeah. It's a, mi- a very mild creepy story. So what you're getting at is it needs more salt. It needs more spices. Yes. Yeah. Maybe some more cheese, too. Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit of cheese, yeah. yeah like, again, like... Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it just needs more to yeah. stand out because like it it sounds really bad to say but it I feel like it's going to be forgettable just because it's so I, baseline yeah also the title is a little like I understand like that's what the person says but like I literally typed that in like to this morning to like to br- like, try and check something mm-hmm. and I came up with two creep bosses stories on creep boss that wiki called back in ba- uh, uh, hell and back yeah <laughs> like the only difference between them was this one had two hell and back so like I feel like maybe, because it's WoW based, fell. Fell, yeah. They say fell instead of hell and in, in um, or hell not fell, maybe. Um, like because well because this story they specifically say hell, and he comments that like they usually say fell, but they usually never say hell. Oh, I know, but if you yeah. say hell, then that gives that I, links you to other things. I was also thinking maybe just, like I'm maybe, trying to make it more I, WoW. I, I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, like making it like themed and some of that. Um, I was almost thinking Mesner. Just or have or like just having Mesner as like the name for it, but um, Mesner follows right at the beginning, so that you're not confused like I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 right there, yeah. Um, but yeah, or or like the um, the Red Ridge Tower or something like that. Yeah, there are there, other there, alternatives there, that would be a lot better. Yeah, and like to tell him back is is like is the kind of a focus in the story, but like yeah, like you said, Fell might work or like. But then you have to like kind of maybe add a few things and then it's just to kind of accentu- accentuate. Don't think that's actually a word. It's not. But I continue <laughs> to to accentuate. To accentuate. accentuate. Yeah, accentuate. Um, that yeah, fell like it's they keep saying hell when as a place, not even though that's not a thing in World of Warcraft's lore, and that they use fell. Or, but either way, yeah. it's and the, the character yeah. itself is saying this. Yes. So the character itself should be saying fell. That's another thing. I just feel right. Like, yes, yeah, and the, the, I'm just saying, like, if you're gonna if you're gonna call it fell, then you should add a little bit more about like wh- like why that's so bad, like why it's so weird that they do, they use hell instead of fell. What I'm getting at is, you should almost just say fell because if it's if it's meant to be the character doing all this, the character of Mesner doing all this and getting back at the player, then the character in the in the World of Warcraft world would be saying fell. Okay, right. I I, I do hear you, but like. I don't think it should be. Like I think. I, oh, I know because yeah. it wouldn't be weird. Yeah, exactly. So Aside I, from the fact that there's this random cut scene up here for some reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just not. A, a time change would work. Yeah. Just I, a time change would work. I'm just not. Red Ridge so Tower fell. or something. Go <laughs> yeah. with that. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Bottom line. Bottom partial. line. Partial recommendation to anyone who plays WoW. It's a very baseline story. It's not going to piss you off. It's not like reading Spyro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that level. But it's no Princess or Bendra. Yeah. Though you but, could take inspiration from Bendra or, or of Spyro. Or, or not Spyro. Yeah, <laughs> never, no. Sp- never Spyro. No, no. How dare you? Uh, or for the princess, I meant. Mm-hmm. Um, just for like idea. And again, I like the idea. I really like your idea of um, Mikey because no one's seen yeah, us say things. They can't see the hand um, <laughs> uh, The idea of it being like a second personality kind of thing that's like mm-hmm. trying to communicate with the first personality. It's like, yeah, because really something cool. has to be brought back into the real world. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with the dream with the dreamscape stuff I mentioned earlier. It's like mm-hmm. video game creep positive have a tendency to not be scary uh, not be scary for a lot of people who read them because it's like a dreamscape where like dreams can't hurt you. Until yeah, can. it's just yeah. in the screen. So yeah. if you bring it out of that, then it has more staying power. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that is it for this week. Mm-hmm. Um, we hope if, if the reader is, if the author is listening to this, I hope this helps in some way. And hope uh, you write more. Yes, I, because I, if this is your first, I, I, I want to see what your hundredth is. I did check the. Um, <laughs> that's true. I did check the uh, the guy, the person's um, like. 
uh, spot on Creepbox. Like, yeah, they don't have anything like mentioned. Like, well, like, I don't know if they've been, if they've written more or not. No. So like, I'll have to maybe see if they have any more in their contributions. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, it's a good start. It just needs a lot of work. Mm-hmm. So. Um, that's this week's episode. If you like what you heard or if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below. This gets posted, whether it be on QB6, Facebook, YouTube, or Tumblr. You can check us out on uh, iTunes and uh, leave us a rating and review. Help us spread like a virus. You can uh, also contact us on Twitter. Uh, Mikey is at the East Stands for Evil. Gamer Nell is at the Gamer Nell with a W. And I am at Review Cultist. Uh, you can also leave us emails at aldenteriamortis at gmail.com. That's A-L-D-N-T-E-R-I-G-A-M-O-R-T-I-S at gmail.com, where you can also leave us suggestions for other creep pastas you'd like to discuss on the show. Um, and if you'd like to help support the show, you can go to Patreon. Look up El Dente Rigamortis on Patreon and select the back tier you'd like to support us at. We have $2 and $5 tier with special episodes, extra content, early access, just... Uh, Give us, or just donate whatever you feel you want to help support the show with. Uh, and for our patrons already, thank you immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay, and we always appreciate that. And to our listeners and the authors of these sh- stories, thank you as well, because without you, we wouldn't really have a show, either for listenership or for stories for discussion. Writership? Mm. Is it a word? Yeah, I don't know. It is now. Moving on. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. Hi, I'm Mikey. The E stands for evil. And I'm the Gamer Neil. And this has been Al Dente Rigamortis. Sleep well.